Alfred Cohen's been totally dedicated. There's never been much doubt about Usa Verte's ability, but injuries and personal problems have seriously disrupted his career. He says he even contemplated suicide. But he's fought back to put himself together as a person and a boxer, and he knows tonight's his last chance to force his way into world class. It's a pretty enticing prospect, I can tell you. Gary Mason's with us. Gary, the first thing to ask you quickly, uh, there's a problem in Cook's past, and that problem is Ursa Veta. Ursa Veta beat him once. Is Cook inspired by a blind passion for revenge? But there is a saying in boxing that you never fight a good man twice. And? This could be Cook's mistake if he does fight him twice. Um, the odds um, aren't in Cook's favour. He's got a lot to lose. Gary, very quickly, uh, looking at the, the, uh, the prospects for the future, for the winner, a whole lucrative world championship picture opens up. It looks like the end for the loser. There's everything at stake here, but um, Cook is staking a lot more because he's actually fighting someone that's beaten him. And at this stage, it's a very big risk to take. All right, Gary, in the build-up, we're going to get a, a lot more from you. Thanks very much, indeed. But before we go any further, we ought to introduce you now to the rest of our team tonight. At the ringside, the former IBF World Cruiserweight champion, Glenn McCrory, and our big fight commentator, Ian Dark. Question for Ian. Uh, Ian, I just wonder if James Cook hasn't uh, bitten off more than he can chew here. Well, Paul, I reckon that he might have done, because this Finn is unbeaten in 17 years and 19 fights. He's got the reputation of a real puncher, and, of course, he's rescued his career from the very depths of despair. His whole career is on the line here, but Cook, as well, is a reborn fighter, remember, at 32 years of age. It looks as if it might be a hard, maybe brutal thriller, Glenn McCrory. It looks to be a very good fight, but I think Cook can do it. I honestly believe he's getting confident uh, as cut and confident. And I think he took this fight rather than a world title fight, so I think he's confident he can win. Cook, of course, has been a revelation, hasn't he, since he lost to Harold Graham over the last three years? He's done brilliantly. Uh, he's changed his whole career around. He's, he's done fabulous, and he's getting better all the time. I was, I was very impressed against Kayla. OK, Glenn McCrory says James Cook to win. And guess what? For once, I actually agree with him, but I reckon it's going to be a very hard fight indeed. Yeah, and if it was that easy, there'd be no point any of us sh showing up to watch the action. We're going to get it all underway in just a moment or two for you with another of the super middleweight bouts from the undercard tonight, featuring Roland Eriksson, another fighting Scandinavian. This one's from Sweden, and he's been building a little reputation for himself around the place. He's had to travel far and wide to get his fights. Uh, one of his big problems, I have to tell you, was with cuts, but he is certainly a promising performer. And his opponent from Manchester, Frank Eubanks, a middleweight, good enough already to have given a lot of useful fighters some trouble and I think even though he's stepping up to super middleweight there's going to be something. Join us again in just a moment. We're about to get the action underway here on ringside with the super middleweight fight between uh, Roland Eriksson from Sweden and uh, the local interest provider, well almost local from Manchester by Frank Eubanks. What are you looking for from uh, this guy, the Swede, who's made a bit of a name for himself so far, Gary? Well, every time he's visited these shores, he's been injured by, um, he's been stopped by cut eyes. And Eubanks is in a camp um, that are on the roll. They have a lot of winning fighters coming out. Both fighters have a lot to fight for here tonight. He's been in with one or two guys, we should say, with some form, like Kayla, Ericsson and Johnny Milford. Hasn't been quite up to that standard so far. Well, a, a cut eye injury is not a, a great defeat. So hopefully he might be able to um, change those here tonight. Thank you, Gary. Why don't we join our commentators for the first time tonight, Glenn McCrory, and as usual, first we'll hear from Ian Darrell. Thank you very much, Paul and Gary. There is Roland Eriksson. He's 29. He comes from Sweden, where, interestingly, professional boxing has been banned for the last 21 years. So Eriksson has been fighting all over Europe. He's been to Italy, to Finland, Britain, of course, Denmark and Spain. Here comes Frank Eubanks now, who, well, his age is under some suspicion. He says he's 22. Uh, the hint is that he might be a year or two older than that. Doesn't matter too much, uh, but he's been boxing very usefully. He's only lost one of his last six as Eubanks, and he might give Ericsson, who's quite highly rated, a bit of a test here. And uh, as Gary Mason was telling you, Ericsson has had an awful lot of trouble with cut eyes against Mark Kayla and Johnny Melfar. 
In fact, the cut he got against Malfar, a lot of experienced ringsiders said that was the worst cut they had ever seen in a generation watching boxing. So it could easily reopen for Ericsson tonight. So both of the boxers now in the ring, and this might be quite interesting. Ericsson here, if he wins it, he might get a European title shot should Wieseverta, the Finn, win the big fight against James Cook coming up live right after this one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a super middleweight contest of eight three-minute rounds. May I firstly introduce you, in this corner, substituting for the indisposed Winston Ray, would you please welcome from Manchester, Frank Eubanks. And his opponent from Gothenburg in Sweden, Roland Tiger Eriksson. At the weigh-in at one o'clock this afternoon, Eubanks scaled 12 stones and 6 pounds. Ericsson scaled 11 stone, 13 and a half pounds. Our timekeeper is Mr. Nick White. Our referee, Mr. Richie Davis, and this is eight three-minute rounds of boxing. So it's going to be an eight-rounder here. Eubanks is giving away quite a bit of weight there, isn't he? Uh, 11 stone 6 plays 11 stone 13 and a half. Eubanks is usually a middleweight. By the way, he is no relation at all to Chris Eubank, the WBO super middleweight champion. There's the old eyeballs out staring between the two of them, Glenn. Yeah, it's, it's a common thing now. I don't, it doesn't wear that much. You know, the fight's going to take place when the bell happens. I don't think that does a lot. I think this could be quite a difficult fight for us. I know they're, they're tipping him quite highly, but Eubanks is tough. We've seen him before, and um, he can fight a little bit. He's coming to short notice, but I, I think he, you know, he, he's seen Ericsson can cut, and I think he's going to have a go a little bit. We saw Eubanks earlier this year. He's starting quite aggressively against Cornelius Carr. When he put up a good fight, he got beaten. And he's really going for Ericsson in the opening minute or so of the contest here he's landed with three or four really uh, meaty head punches and he knows of course doesn't he Glenn about the liability of Ericsson to cut up around the eyes he knows he cuts badly and also he's took the fight at relatively short notice so he, I think he feels that you know he might tire so he's gonna have a go early try and get some success straight away Ericsson in theory should pack a bit more power with that weight advantage Best part of half the stone. Good left hook from him. Ericsson, who lives in Gothenburg in Sweden, but of course with professional boxing ban there, travels around to do his fighting and uh, has been over to Britain quite a bit. In fact, at one point he was billed rather strangely as from Battersea in Sweden. I've heard some combinations in my time. Look, Eubanks looks very relaxed, he's not overawed by it. I think he stepped in and he feels that he can have a good go here. No pressure on him, of course. He's come in as the late replacement opponent for Winston Ray. And uh, he figures he could maybe pick up a little handy win against a man who's ranked by the trade newspaper Boxing News as number six among the super middleweight contenders. It would be a... A very good scalp to get a hold of. So he's got nothing to lose, so he might as well go for it. Big weight of this, of course, uh, in British boxing with uh, Chris Eubank around, James Cook, who we're going to see later, Nigel Benn, Slugger O'Toole, who's just won the British Championship. That's right, the, the Super Millwood division is a new division, and already it's the you know, it's probably going to be the, the most exciting division. Good left hook from Ericsson there. Or to explain that this division is one weight up from the conventional middleweight at 12 stone. So it's between the old middleweight and light heavyweight. Nice, free, fluent, liquid mover, isn't he, around the ring, Eubank? He's doing well. He looks very cool. He's just letting his shots go nice and relaxed and loose. And he's, you know, he's finding Ericsson quite a bit. 
End of an interesting first round there. Ericsson not having things all his own way. Stop boxing. Time Welcome up. back to the Lakshmi Leisure Centre in Battersea. You're watching live boxing on Sky Sports. And this is an eight-round chief support to the main event here tonight between Roland Ericsson wearing the black shorts here and in the yellow, Frank Eubanks, the younger boxer from Manchester. Interesting first round. The big fight still to come for the European title. James Cook against the tough Finnish boxer Tamo Wiseverda. That promises to be something special, so stay with us for that. Good left hook from Ericsson. Till now, Eubanks is looking... He's looking very good. He's, you know, he's forcing the fight. He looks very confident. He's, he's catching Ericsson with some good shots. Ericsson seems to, he's trying to feign a jab and look for that left hook, but as yet he's not finding the range. Now there, just for a moment, the gloves down from Eubanks, but he did ride those punches very well. Just leant back and used his reflexes to avoid the worst of the punishment coming in from Ericsson who scores well there with the combination oh and that's a good left hook and I think that Eubanks felt the weight of that one is quite happy to hold on for a second Glenn that's right Eubanks is leaning back he's leaning back from shots Ericsson's throwing the jab and then he's leaning back and he's landing you know he's getting caught with left hooks and right hands there we go Ericsson instead of tucking up you know leaning forward putting his hands up above his face he's, he's very casual Ericsson has 12 wins and two defeats, and his two defeats were both cut-eye defeats, those ones against Mark Kaler and Johnny Melfar. And he's won eight of his 12 victories inside the distance, which suggests he carries a bit of a wallop. But that's Eubanks coming back well with his combinations. And he looks, I must say, since I last saw him, a more confident fighter. He does, he's very relaxed. He's throwing the jab well and he's keeping... Ericsson off balance with a jab and then he's landed some good shots of his own. He's got to be careful, obviously, you know, that Ericsson's bit, he's, he's worked hard for the fight, so he's got to have to be careful in the later rounds. Just keep tucked up and doing what he's doing. Some more good work from Eubanks. 22 seconds to go. And this is the second round here. And as we thought, Roland Eriksson, quite highly rated, being given a pretty meaningful test by young Frank Eubanks. Good jab, though, there, Eriksson. Coming up then towards the end here of the second round. Welcome back to Battersea. Break between the second and third rounds here. Both boxers uh, getting instructions from the corner over on the far side there. Roland Eriksson, there he is. No signs of damage yet, Glenn, around those suspect eyes of his. No, it's standing up well at the minute. He doesn't even seem to have much reddening. You can see the, the scar of the tissue there. But... Third round coming up. Frank Eubanks from Manchester in the yellow trunks then. And the Swede, Roland Eriksson. Who's 29 years of age, about seven years older, in the black. Nice right uppercut inside, wasn't that from Eubanks? Back comes Ericsson with the left hook. There was a hint of the inside of the glove, but not about the left that followed it. Good shot from Ericsson. Referee Richie Davis saying, watch the use of the heads as they come close together. Of course, Ericsson will be particularly concerned about that with his susceptibility to cuts around the eyes. Ericsson's starting to pick up the pace a little bit more this round. He needs to do that. In the early rounds, he's, he's had little good spells where he's threw a few shots together and looked quite good. But he hasn't done enough of it, and he's starting to do it this round, and he needs to do it. If Eubanks has come in of, on short notice, you know, he mightn't be that fit. So Ericsson's got to you know, press the advantage. The corner, of course, will be desperately hoping that those eyes hold up because once you start getting problem with cut eyes and you get scar tissue, it can keep recurring. And uh, if that is going to keep happening, there's not a lot of point in Ericsson carrying on as a professional boxer. So far tonight, so good for him. But this Eubanks, 
is a tough proposition, but that's a good left hook too from Ericsson. He's starting, as Glenn said, to get into gear now. Yeah, he's slipping into another gear and he's starting to put his shots together. He, he looks quite sharp when he does that. Ericsson needs this win. And Eubanks giving away that little bit of weight and coming in late. Those factors, of course, may tell against him as it goes on. Ericsson's coming back off a five-month layoff after the repairs to the eyes. I think Ericsson needs a win and needs to do it in a little bit of style if he wants to you know, look for European title shots and that sort of thing. Good right uppercut that, and then a body shot from Eubanks. He's still dangerous, and look at those left hooks. Ericsson took them well, though. Good round, this. And then a left hook again, and another one from Ericsson. Good hand speed he's got. He, he is, he's quick of hand. But he, he took a few guns, he come back well there, because he got hit with a few good shots of Eubanks. It's warming up into a very good fight. Ericsson's done some good work in this round. Eubanks has had his flurries too, but I think it's been the Swedes round so far. Last few seconds then of the, sec of the third round, I should say here, and really warming up into a good contest here. And down goes Ericsson right at the end of the round. Almost there, right on the bell, shakes his head, caught by a left hook. And drama right at the end of the round, and Ericsson is badly shaken up there. And the question is, with blood coming from his mouth, he looks a sorry sight. Will a minute be long enough for him to recover, Glenn? I'm not sure if it will. He looks hurt. He looks, he looks very hurt. Didn't look very keen when he went back to the corner. Well, suddenly, when Ericsson was taking the round, this happened. And it's all over. It was a good uppercut, a good uppercut. They've retired Ericsson and Frank Eubanks has caused a shock win where we warned you that this fellow was on a bit of a roll. And between the rounds, with all that blood coming from the mouth of Ericsson, his corner have said that he was not ready to go on. And Eubanks scores a very good win indeed. Here it is again now. This was the drama at the end of the contest right uppercut and that was the shot that did it it was the right uppercut it was a very good uppercut he just pushed him back with the jabs i don't know if he was hurt before that you know he seemed to be under a bit of pressure and then a very good uppercut just pushed the head back with a jab and a jaw and shot and that was enough he was sick then here it is again slightly different angle that was a good stiff jab and then the right hand kind of a hook come uppercut really right through the middle and it was good night for Roland Eriksson. That's a bad setback for him. An excellent win for Frank Eubanks, who is improving now all the time. He wins against the odds here. The script has been torn up. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the third round, with Roland Eriksson having sustained a badly cut lip, the referee, Richie Davis, has stopped the contest. Our winner, Frank Eubanks. Well, Frank Eubanks, they're arguing about his age, whether he really is 22 or a bit older. As I said at the start, it doesn't much matter. Before this, he was ranked number 14 uh, among the active British boxers down at middleweight. And I think this, uh, this win is going to up his career no end. As he goes off there to the dressing room, he'll go there a very happy man indeed. Thanks to you, Ian, and we'll be back, of course, uh, in just a few minutes. Cuts problem surfaces again for Ericsson, but not the eye this time, but the lip. Yes, to me, it looks as if he quit there once he went down, but the champs camp, as I said before, they're producing a lot of good fighters, and although that guy came in as a, Eubanks came in as a substitute, he still caused an upset. It proves a good sign of a good camp. This is just the, uh, the confidence problem that you were talking about, Gary. When a fella starts to get cut, maybe just something goes in terms of his resolve as well. There's the knockdown. There we go, it was a couple of punches and a right uppercut. And at that time, Ericsson then, he was, it looks as if he said he'd had enough, he would lead into it again. 
He's looking for the right uppercut all the time, is Eubanks. The jab knocks the head back. Which, Straight to the middle. And another one, and the right uppercut, that must have been what cut the lip. But if we, later on, we see that they'd also cut on the other side of the eyebrow as there well. There was a little nick on the eyebrow as well, wasn't there? Yes. So I think it's just a matter of Ericsson saying, well, maybe enough's enough and um, why push my luck? Before this, you'd actually mentioned to me that although, in your opinion, Eubanks looked tidy and looked a product, there wasn't a lot of power behind the, the punches, but he's landed this on the button. Yeah, well, it, um, Ericsson there, he didn't look hurt, dazed in any way. I think it's just the, the matter of the injury. And Ericsson, obviously, is a thinking person and he's thought about what's happened to him and he said, well, why should I continue and take any more risks? I would imagine that from a, if Frank Eubanks is a half-thinking fellow, which I'm sure he is, mm. now he's starting to think, hey, I'm putting a little run together here. One defeat in seven. Uh, Cornelius Carr was the only defeat which we saw uh, last year. Uh, and, and now it's starting to look rather good for him. This is fifth win of the year. Yeah, well, Cornelius Carr wasn't... It's not a bad defeat because Cornelius Carr is actually a good prospect, a fairly decent fighter. So um, he's on a roll now, and this will give him a boost. Probably this would go down as his best win as a pro, one would think. Yes, it most yeah, it will do up to date. And what, what's the future for you, Banks, finally? Well, providing he's matched properly, the fact that he's actually coming as a substitute doesn't actually help the situation. If he's matched properly, he could go on to do good things. He's in the middleweight with the other Eubanks's and um, the It's Benz a very strong area in, in, in British terms at the minute, isn't it? Well, the middleweight division is, is the average size Britain, isn't it? Uh, a middleweight or a super middle. And that's where the excitement is, so he's in with a shout. OK, Gary. M lots more excitement coming right up because now we're going to start to build up to the main event of the evening, the European super middleweight title defence by James Cook against a rough, tough Finn called Tarma Verta.